Hey, cool. So, hi everyone. Really happy to be here. Thank you for, so much, Rob, for having me. And uh, today we're going to talk about how to build a scalable chat up with someone in Azure in all this under 60 minutes. Um, usually when I, I do this in live, I hope the crowd will say, can we do that? Yes, we can. So obviously I can't hear you. Yes, we but, can. Uh, <laughs> exactly. So, um, okay, let me be in focus. As Rob said, my name is Ariel ben -Khuresh. Good pronunciation, by the way. I am a software architect from Code Value, and uh, I'm also the admin of the Israeli.NET user group. I'm speaker in international and domestic events. And the last and the most important is I'm a developer like you, and uh, this is what I like doing. So uh, let's get started. So I would like to start with uh, introducing you to a great game of a franchise you might have heard about, the Game of Thrones. Um, probably most of you have read the books and watched the TV uh, series. Uh, so the card game is a really nice uh, game, um, even a superb game that my friends and myself are playing. Um, today, less frequently, since uh, a lot of us have new obligations like babies and such. But we try to meet every few weeks and play. And the way we organize those meetings is by using WhatsApp. WhatsApp is a generic chat application. Everyone here, at least, have it. And you can almost uh, imagine the chat that is going on every weekend. Um, someone is asking who wants to play, at what time, and what is the location. And it becomes really uh, uh, iterative. Like every time, it's the same thing. And I thought to myself, uh, because WhatsApp is a generic app, I could do something better, that it will be more specific to the scenario I have in hand. And I thought to myself, OK, this is a great idea for a site project. And some of you may be familiar with the, this comic strip. And um, some of you may even sympathize with this character. I know that when I saw it the first time, I thought, OK, this is me. Um, and um, so this is what a lot of us I think uh, have in common, is that we start some cool and crazy side projects. And along the way, we ditch them. And the question is, why? Why do we do that? And it, there is no simple answer for that. It's a, a mixture of a lot of reasons. But I want to focus on one aspect of that, is the tooling. Um, if the tooling is not good enough, or not good enough, then when we eat the friction, we usually start to lose interest. Because we have a very limited time to work on our side project. And it's not our day job, right? Where we are <laughs> trying to uh, walk, th walk through uh, uh, all those problems and issues. And if we reach a point where the tooling are against us, then we will most likely go and find another thing to do. And um, so that's, that is what I set out uh, to find out. If I can build this chat application, uh, with the tooling that now we have, like Xamarin and uh, Azure, and see if maybe things have improved. And um, the plan for us for today is try to get a full circle, try to get to something that is uh, working across the board. It won't have a lot of the features, but it will cover something that will that by the end we will have a complete set application, which is quite nice. And along the way, we will pinpoint a few uh, considerations, a few things that I've used, and uh, you can choose and pick what suits you, uh, what suits your need. And uh, so the first thing we're going to talk is obviously Xamarin Forms. We are in Xamarin University. So most of you are, if not experts, then uh, really uh, um, accomplished developers by now. Uh, we're going to touch on Prism as well. 
uh, we're going to take the Azure mobile app as a backend and together with both uh, uh, platforms we are going to, I'm going to show how I built authentication on top of it and a real-time chat uh, uh, by using uh, signal R. And um, lastly, we're going to try to use uh, push notifications and see if it works. It depends on the internet speed if it works. <laughs> so hopefully now that it is uh, over the internet, it won't have any issues. So let's jump in into Xamarin Forms. So as I said, I think there is a little introduction you needed for uh, such an audience. But in case um, you have uh, concentrated on the Xamarin.Android and Xamarin.iOS sessions of Xamarin University, um, then Xamarin Forms is an, another abstraction layer you can use that um, with that, you have the ability to define a UI using XAML. Um, XAML is a um, standard that was developed by Microsoft for WPF and their own mobile tooling and was adopted uh, by Xamarin. And it's a subset of the uh, full XAML features that we have in uh, WPF, for example. But still, uh, it's very similar in a lot of the concepts like data binding and layout objects and such. Um, and by using uh, this uh, abstraction layer, we are able to target uh, uh, iOS and Android and render native controls like we were using uh, uh, Xamarin.iOS and Xamarin.Android. Um, the screenshot you see now is an application uh, I've been working on uh, a few months ago. Uh, it's an application by Kodak. And I've put here a screenshot of it because um, this is a Xamarin Forms application on iOS. And if you're familiar with iOS, you can see it has been extensively uh, uh, designed and changed the look and feel of the standard controls. And this is just a hint of the uh, power you have with Xamarin Forms that you can do whatever you want with it. And you don't, don't need to be afraid of the limitations on such. Of course, you need to work on the performance, but uh, this is a, a session uh, uh, by itself, I guess. Uh, Kodak is an interesting story uh, because uh, uh, it's a company that, uh, like I like to say, like uh, the extinct dinosaurs, that the world around it changed and they failed to uh, notice and adapt. And uh, when the digital era of the photographers started, they were left behind in the uh, film industry. And they're trying to uh, rebrand themselves with new uh, application, with new ideas. And this is one application that allows you, a bit like Airbnb, to hook up with a photographer. So now it's in full power working with uh, uh, companies that need uh, uh, photographers for their um, annual events and such to hook up with potential photographers and uh, all the uh, transactions and uh, uh, the photos, the output is done by the application and the backend, which is quite neat. And uh, Prism for Xamarin Forms. Uh, Prism, uh, if you are familiar with uh, the WPF equivalent or the um, Windows 8 store equivalent, which is now UWP. Um, it is, um, uh, first was a, a, a guidance for people that actually wanted to build Outlook in the early age, in the early days of uh, WPF. And uh, nowadays, it is maintained by the community, by awesome people like uh, uh, Brian Lagunas and Brian Noyce. And um, it is a framework that helps with uh, uh, infrastructure with common patterns such as navigation and uh, um, uh, many such uh, features that we are going to be uh, using here today. And um, this is something that I encourage you to check out on your next uh, Xamarin Forms application. Uh, there is a lot of going on and you can even participate and do some uh, uh, contributions as well. So. Um, with that, let's jump into our initial solution and see what we have here. So basically, 
we have a very standard Zammer informed solution. Um, currently, we have here a portable class library. I am a fan of portable class libraries. I really don't understand why people like the shared project, but what I can say, I tolerant. <laughs> So everyone can make their own mistakes and use whatever they want. No, I'm just joking. Everything is great, but uh, I, I prefer the portable uh, project. And uh, over here, we have the Android application and the uh, Windows application. By the end, I'm also going to show the iOS application. And uh, today, we have this nice feature that I can broadcast my Mac as well. Uh, this, was not this was not possible when I originally created this presentation. So I edit it as uh, something uh, on on the last thing to show. Um, also, when I run this application, and that's what we're going to show, um, I'm probably going to use the UWP because it's the fastest. Um, but nowadays, the, even the emulators are better. So we can even use the Android as well. And everything uh, is side by side, which is also quite neat. Um, just uh, um, um, just to say, when I worked on the application that I shown you before, uh, I used Xamarin Studio on the Mac because Windows was not so important, and it just wasn't um, good enough to use it on a, a virtualized machine. But uh, today. I think that I would have been uh, using Visual Studio with the new features that we have. Um, so this is something that you can uh, consider. So this is the application as well, and I'm going to show and talk about how I built it. Um, so the two platform-specific projects are pretty much uh, on the default uh, during this talk. I had very small modifications to, to top of to to put there, and um, we will talk about them in specific. But let's now concentrate on this portable project. First of all, we have this uh, app class. This is the where the Xamarin forms uh, initializes and starts, and you can see that we are now uh, inheriting from Prism application. This will allow us to use the navigation features of, Zammer, of uh, Prism, sorry, instead of the default ones uh, uh, that are uh, from the shelf with the Xamarin forms uh, platform. And uh, this will allow us to do like view model navigation and uh, many such features that are very helpful. We have here the views, the, the, the uh, pages of the things that we are going to talk about. We have this login page that you've seen now here. And uh, the way I built it is with uh, XAML. Um, so this is a very simple grid uh, with a few buttons that have, have bound commands to it. And uh, you can see that three, comma, three buttons are placeholders. They're going to have a default implementation. And later on, when we'll do the login of Twitter, we will have a specific implementation for Twitter. Uh, another interesting thing to notice here is this view model locator attribute, that this will allow us to hook up a view model automatically based on naming convention. This is done by Prism. Uh, when we navigate to the login page, so over here, when you initialize this application, when and we navigate to the login page, we will be given automatically this login page with this instance of the uh, login page view model. And in this uh, login page view model, you can see we can have uh, dependency injection features. I use Unity here, but you can use any IOC container you feel like. And um, with this navigation service, I am able to navigate to the next room. So if I click here on this button, for example, you can see that I've navigated to a new page. And this page is very similar. We also have here the auto wire uh, of the view model. And over here, we have a, a list box, which is now empty because we've yet to connect to the backend. Um, the, another page we will be talking about is the chat page. 
eventually we will have here rooms that we can select. This is similar to the groups in, in WhatsApp. And over here in the chat page, we will have a specific uh, a conversation with the people in this group. Um, so, um, so Ariel, uh, a common yes. question that uh, we should address is, uh, are you going to make all this code available afterwards? Can people take a look at this after the session? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So we'll have a link to the slides and the, the materials on the on the Xamarin University guest lecture page, uh, like we usually do. So give it a couple days afterwards, and I'll get that posted. Yes. Thanks. Sure. And um, as you will see next, as we advance, you will also have all the steps that I've created. So you will be able to to see how we build it in steps. And this is a uh, will be very helpful for any learning purpose. And um, so also, this is nice. Okay, so this is a very simple application. We have, uh, create, we have uh, had our pages registered and we've seen how we navigate between them. This is uh, the basic stuff. So uh, let's uh, jump ahead and talk about uh, Azure. So uh, Windows Azure, um, for the last few years, has features that targeting uh, mobile applications, which are quite great for any mobile builders. Uh, it gives us a bound full of features that are on the infrastructure layer and allows us to uh, concentrate on the domain, on the specific features of our applications. Uh, we can have a database on the cloud and we can have push notifications, offline support, authentication, and uh, uh, background workers, everything you expect from an Azure, from an Azure service uh, with the scalability of Azure. And um, uh, we can make good use for it in our application as well. So the first step is going to the uh, uh, Microsoft Azure portal. And uh, you start by creating a new application. And you go to the web plus mobile, select the mobile app, and you give it a name. And then after you're done, you will have uh, created uh, this uh, app service application. And from here, probably the first thing you want to start is going to the checking out the quick start page. Let's wait a few seconds for it to load up. And here you can see that the uh, Azure portal, the Azure mobile app supports uh, uh, many platforms, um, including the native ones, but we are interested here in the Xamarin Forms uh, uh, option. The first thing you will need to do is create a database to store your data. And then you have an interesting option you can uh, consider. You have the option to have uh, your backend in JavaScript and Node or C Sharp and ASP.NET Web API. In this specific presentation, I've opted out for C Sharp and ASP.NET. Uh, but by all means, you're free to choose whatever uh, suits you. Uh, they are pretty much uh, uh, similar in most of the features. Uh, it really depends on on your taste, um, but um, feel free to 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 look and see whatever suits you. Um, after you are done and selecting the, this uh, uh, flavor, you are able to get a, a vis uh, to download here a solution. Um, with the backend of project and a Xamarin Forms project as well, or an example how to uh, uh, connect this uh, um, service to an existing app. And this is basically what I've done here. So um, this is the backend uh, project. And um, it's pretty simple. We have here uh, two entities that we are going to work with. One is the room object. And this is entity data is really a POCO, a plain old CLR object. 
It doesn't have much, uh, just basic properties that are going to be used in the table as well. For us, and, and, and on top of it, I just added a few uh, um, a metadata named for description over the room. And a message is a single message that uh, I will be sending inside a room, and it will have the text of the message, the room, and uh, the user that sent it, and what time was it sent. And over here we have a basic controllers that uh, are built on top of a table controller of a web API. Uh, and they use a entity framework under the hood. So we are exposed here a very standard way of working with database. And uh, if you create a new controller, it will be generated for you uh, this uh, code. And you will be able now to access all those methods and retrieve data into our application. So um, the, the, the room controller is very, very similar to this. Over here in the context, you are able to define further information and uh, what you want to do when uh, uh, you update the, uh, the data and such on and such. All right, so um, now what we want to do is, um, to, is integrate the, the, this service with our application. And I've uh, loaded here a snapshot of the code. And uh, the first thing you want to do is initialize the mobile service client over here. And then I'm adding it to the container so I will be able to use it uh, um, with the uh, view models and, uh, uh, and uh, the managers that I'm going to show you next. Um, over here, there is the constant of the application URL, including my secret key. So this I will not share with you, because then you will be able to hijack my code, and I will be very sad if that happens. So uh, now we have a few new things over here. I've created here this uh, uh, POCO as well on the uh, uh, side of the client of the mobile app. The identity, again, is just something simple for us to use. Uh, doesn't add functionality to the POCO. And those objects will be passing over the wire. They will be uh, we're passing as JSON and automatically converted for us by Azure Mobile Service. Uh, uh, to use as instances, and uh, you will see that I will be I will be binding them together into the uh, uh, view models, and then to the views, of course. I've created here a generic manager to handle those entities, and this will allow me to um, to get an an abstraction for those uh, uh, objects, and retrieve at will the items that I need, add. A condition if I would like to, and uh, a save a sync method that will create a new instance if it's a new one or an or update an existing entity. And when I'm calling this API of the table over here, this will be using the the mobile service SDK that I've added uh, into this project. And uh, by using this, we are able to interact, get information from the Azure uh, backend, update it, twill, uh, and um, do whatever we want. So uh, the, the specific type managers are really simple. Um, so over here, we can have like a filtering condition that we will get only the messages for the specific room that we are in. And over here, I believe there is really nothing uh, uh, much interesting. So uh, let's see how it works together. Um, so the login page is similar to what we had before. We just navigate to the room page. And over here, we can see that Prism gives us this uh, interface of iNavigation Aware. And over here, this will be called after this page is navigated to. So after we navigate, 
I'm calling the room manager and I asking it to get all the rooms that we have in this database. And um, we put it here in this collection and this will be bound to a list view in the room page. And um, we also have a selected room when the user select, so we can navigate as well. And this is something interesting that I've uh, been using the default uh, um, out of the box text cell. This is the most uh, performant way, but you are able to create your uh, cells uh, uh, as you see fit. Just be careful not to overdo yourself, and then you will suffer the consequences uh, if you have a lot of, uh, of uh, items. Um, so let's uh, let's run this and see this in action. Let's start with the UWP. Let's click this button, we navigate, and now after we navigate, we expect this list view to get filled with uh, rooms, and we got those. You can see this is a specific cell of a, a text and the description, and when we navigate here, we have the messages that are in this, uh, uh, in this room. Um, so, looks like everything works. Um, when we select a room, we can navigate and you can see a nice feature that I'm able to pass data into the next page by using these navigation parameters. This is, by, is done by the PRISM infrastructure for us. And again, using the same pattern in the chat page, when we navigate to this uh, page, we are calling the get messages uh, method to get all the messages that are part of this of uh, this uh, uh, group, of this room. Um, so uh, things are going well. We also have a, a go back if we want to head back now to this uh, uh, other page. And um, we can also uh, send a message in this room over here. I will be saying hello and you can see this is a temp user because we don't have users yet okay the sender is temp and we added here a new message and when we called the save and think this this added it to the ui and when we added when we called the save i think it was saved on the back end as well um so this is a a, a, a nice start we have for this chat application I hope you think so. Uh, if I run this Android application, we have a, we have a very similar experience over here. This is a vast improvement over the previous simulators of Android. You must agree with me. Uh, Otherwise, we will be waiting still for the first demo uh, um, to start. It still takes a few seconds. And over here, we got as well the room. And we got this uh, chat as well. So things looking good. We can uh, continue on. So the first thing we want to do is is implement the the login screen. And authentication is something that is uh, given to us by the Azure Mobile App infrastructure. Out of the box, they support those providers that we, you see on the screen. Uh, OOS uh, providers such as Facebook, Twitter, Microsoft, and Google, and also support for uh, Azure Active Directory for uh, intranet applications, if you will. And of course, you are able to create custom uh, login uh, features as well, if you like. So let's go to the portal. and. Um, 
let's cancel this. Another tab we have here is the authentication authorization tab. And you can see here now that over here you need to configure those providers. And I've bothered to configure only Twitter. And if I click here, you will see the secret keys again that I'm using. So I will not do that. But it's very similar. If I click here on the Google, for example, you have this button. And this will guide you step by step on how to acquire this uh, uh, client ID and client secret. It involves in registering your application with Google uh, and declaring the uh, permissions that you would like the user to give you. And uh, after you're done, you will be able to put here those uh, 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 IDs and secrets. And um, after that, you will be able to call uh, this code. So Ariel, a quick question. Is yep. there a, a validation framework in there? Um, validation in validation. what way? Sorry? Or how are you doing validation again? But for input? For regular input? Uh, yeah, I think so. OK, so um, out of the box, uh, you have uh, several features of validations. Uh, but uh, usually, OK, so I don't know if, if it's in the context of the of the uh, login page or, or not. Um, so. If it's a, a regular text, you will have to run your own customization. Uh, but if you are talking about the login page, uh, as, a, as a, I will run it now, so you will see it. Um, the um, SDK of uh, Azure Mobile App open its own view for this. And this is something that is out of the reach of, for your code. So it opens up a, a, a web view in a way, and validations are done automatically over here for you. So you don't need to do any anything. Um, I hope it answered the question. Hopefully. Yeah. So, we'll, um, we'll see. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, so. Um, we are, we're here, uh, so, so here we hook up the authentication, authentication providers that we want to add into the uh, into our application, and the way that we are uh, calling calling this code is a bit tricky, and I'm, I will explain in a second why. So we are calling this object, and I will talk about this object in, in a moment, and over here we specify the provider that we wish to log with, to log in with. So uh, uh, Azure Mobile App will know which authentication providers we are asking. The issue here is because you can see that the SDK of Azure is interacting with the UI. It opens up a view, right? So it opens up uh, this view, it needs to know when the user uh, completed the sign-in to close this window, it needs to, to, to understand the platform that is running on. And um, the, the issue here with Zammer informs that when we are in the portable project, we are agnostic. We don't have any specific uh, a way of, uh, of doing a, a platform code, um, at least not in, in the code. We do have some features in, in the XAML itself, and uh, now we even have more features that allows us to, to have controls that are native controls in the XAML. But if we want to access code of the platform in code, then we need to uh, use another feature of, of Xamarin that is uh, using the dependency injection of Xamarin. So let's look on this object. I've created here an interface the iMobile service platform, and this only do the login feature. Over here, we will see all the implementations. 
And you can see that we have two implementations, one for each platform. If we go to the UWP, it's pretty trivial. We don't see anything uh, interesting here. Um, but if we look on the Android implementation, we can see it's the signature is a bit different because this guy needed the form's context to work. So this login, I think, is specific for Android. And in this way, we were able to implement code that will be platform specific. And by using this attribute, when we try to uh, get a mobile service platform, we will get uh, in the uh, in the portable class library, we will get the code of the platform that we are running on. So over here, we are getting an instance, and this instance will be the platform one that we are using now. If we are running the UWP, we get the UWP. If we are getting running Android, we get the Android one. And I already spo spoiled you that we also have an iOS uh, version as well. So this is how I've implemented it to be uh, uh, to be running on a platform. And this is um, another pattern that you need to use in case you need to, to implement a feature that need to touch the platform as well. Um, today in Xamarin Forms, we have a lot of the uh, of those already implemented uh, by James, James Montomegno, for example. He has a, a couple of a very uh, a popular and very good to use uh, plugins for settings, for uh, uh, GPS, I believe. So you should uh, check, it, check it out. So let's complete this. Um, uh, uh, let's complete this uh, login. Uh, I hope this is my password. Uh, let's see. Forgot to prepare it in end. Okay, there we go. Uh, fine. So um, this was quick. Um, I can see now that now I have this my, my Twitter image and my uh, a, a nickname from Twitter. And uh, let's uh, uh, rerun it and place a breakpoint over here and see what we get. Let's rerun it. Call the Twitter. Now it should already remember me. Sign in. I remembered the wrong password for some reason. Never mind. And uh, over here, we get this JSON back. And um, uh, sorry, first we get this result. And this result doesn't give us much information. We get a user ID and we get a notation token we can uh, uh, cache. But this doesn't give us a lot of information, uh, including the user name and the image that, I've, that you see that I've had. So the way to, to get those information is a bit undocumented. You call this uh, uh, URL on the mobile client. And now you get this uh, uh, info object with a lot more information, including the nickname, the display name, and uh, um, the image itself. So I passed it. And over here, if, if, if we jump to this code, I've initialized the current user in a service that I will be able to use it in uh, the view models later on. Uh, and you can see now I have the username and the uh, URL to the image. So when we navigate to the room, now we have the security service here. And in the XAML itself, I am able to bind the current user and the uh, profile image. Um, when we log in, we place here in the, this property of the current user, uh, uh, the instance that we've created in the login page. So quick question. 
Um, yeah. You have that mobile platform user that you're getting from the dependency service? Um, we have this uh, um, object, this one. Uh, I'm looking for a mobile platform user. Is there one called so that? We g over here, we get this yeah. callback. Mobile service user. That's probably what uh, we're talking about. So, um, yeah. yeah, so your result is that mobile service user. Okay, so that's, that's yeah. what the question was about, is what is that coming back from uh, the dependency service there? So hopefully that answers the question. If not, uh, let me know again. Oh, we had a question yeah, so, on that. Yeah, so when we do login, we get this information back, but it doesn't give us a lot of, the, of, of, of options. A lot of information. So when I call this method again, I'm getting a lot more information that the Azure Mobile app has stored for us after it completed the login op feature. Great. So and with would that, that, would you get that same information back, the same uh, ID and everything back? Uh, if you, I don't think so. But if you logged in with Twitter, and then you logged in with Google, would you get that same unique identifier back from that login call? Or is that going to yeah, be so, time? Yeah, yeah, so this one is abstracted. You will have the same return object. But the information that you're getting here will be different based on right. the provider. So we will have to have specific parsers to grab the information that you need. OK, so because that user ID that's on your result, that's coming from Azure, not from Twitter or Facebook or anything else. True. Uh, yes. There, the SID. Yes. Okay. Great. Thanks. Yes. All right. So um, um, uh, let's uh, move along to the next feature. Um, uh, but before we have uh, um, a small uh, bug, um, let's see if we can solve it together. Um, So what I did here now, I used the shortcut. So now I, uh, I have like an automatically logged in with the user. And you can see this is a nice touch. Um, the uh, list view here knows that those messages came to, from me. And I will show you how I did it in a, in a second. Uh, but if I try to get uh, uh, to type a new message, uh, hello. The mu. We can see that it's still a temp. Still, we have a user, so we have a bug here. So uh, the problem here is that the the lousy developer that implemented this application forgot to use the current user when he sent a new message. But it does have this security service. So what in it needed to do in order to solve this bug is uh, use the current user dot username and there we even fixed some bug here in this presentation isn't it awesome and the way that the template works is uh, uh, the, the, the to message templates is by using this uh, data template selector. So we have a, temp a template for my message and template for the other people's message. And based on the username, I'm, I'm selecting which template I want to show in the list view. And the syntax is a bit uh, uh, interesting to say the least. Um, we have here this list view, and we are using the static resource on the item template. If you are familiar with WPF, it, it is a bit different. But this will allow us to use this uh, template selector. All right, so uh, let's talk about our next step. And one, it is one more, uh, going back to that login, though. Uh, one more quick question about um, yes. the SID and things like that. Uh, are those? Yes. SAML claims, do you know what those are, those IDs that are coming back? Are they tokens? Uh, the, the, you mean what is returned with the uh, user? Uh, yeah, from the login async call, you get the, the IDs. Yeah, the result here. Yes. Yeah. So those so, are, um, are SAML tokens, or what are those? Do you know? 
um, it's uh, I think it's the it's the ho host tokens um, that represent the user, but um, I I don't know much more about it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure the Azure site has some documentation on that. I'll see if I can find yeah, yeah. anything. Yeah, of course. Yeah, sure. All right, so let's talk about uh, Signalo. So one of the more awesome things that I'm always telling people about that uh, why to use uh, Xamarin over native applications or, or other uh, alternatives that we have uh, for mobile development is that we have a lot of the .NET uh, uh, frameworks, libraries out there like reactive extensions, and uh, Signaler is, is another good example. So Signaler, for those that are not aware, is, uh, um, is a communication uh, uh, platform uh, to support two-way uh, communication between a client and the server. It is done in an abstracted way. So for us, the clients, we don't really know the mechanism that it is, it is using under the hood to uh, implement this uh, two-way uh, path. Uh, but it depends really on the technology that are being used. It will choose the right uh, method. For example, if it's a, um, a modern uh, browser or modern uh, application, it can use web sockets or other means. If it is uh, something like, God forbid, i7, it might uh, uh, downgrade itself uh, and uh, use polling or uh, parked calls to implement this uh, uh, two-way mechanism. Anyway, for us, um, it's really uh, simple. First, I jump into the, the service. So this is the code that is being run on the Azure, okay? So the next, the first step we need to do is define a hub. This is the the basic feature of uh, of, of SignalR. This is where calls were being uh, uh, get, uh, the, the, are getting picked by the SignalR, and we will be able to transmit back messages to the to our clients. For example, if we call here the client dot all broadcast message we are um, a telling this, all those clients that uh, uh, this message uh, arrived and they can do something with it. Another nice feature that we are going to implement is, uh, uh, let's run it for a, for a moment. And uh, it's better to see it. So if you are familiar with WhatsApp, whenever a user starts typing, um, so I'm going to try and use another application to show you. Uh, sometimes it does that. If we need to recompile, so let's do this. run this real quick so basically what it's going to do is when a user is started typing on, an, on some client we are going to notify to the other so we will know that this user is starting to type is a message also we have some a uh, method that we are uh, uh, handling so we know which users are in which groups and um, by using this uh, code we are able to to call and understand which are the clients that need to get to this, these messages based on the, the group feature. So the start typing here is a dynamic method, and the spelling here is very important because when I show you next the code in the, the, uh, uh, the chat page, so we jumped now to the client side, and um, we have here in the SDK of a signal the hub proxy. And if we look for start typing method, we can see this syntax that we are registering for this start typing method. And this is the action that we are going to, to, to run uh, um, when the, the user 
is uh, starting to type. So let's do this and let's initiate another another application. For some reason it doesn't find it, so let's look over here. So now when I start typing, you can see here, um, let me try to magnify it a bit, that this device start typing. So this is the, 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 the this feature anyway. So let's uh, zoom back again. And we can register ourselves to any message that we want. And let's see now what happens when uh, the user wants to broadcast something so over here when uh, we pick up that there is a, a new message being typed on the client we are calling this uh, method and this uh, will be picked up by the uh, by the chat hub over here so you can see this is the same spelling it's very very important so when we call, when we do this invoke, and we pass here these parameters, those are the things that will be uh, called on the server side. And when we do the start typing, all the clients that are in this group will receive this um, notification, and they will are able to implement their code. So what I did here is check that, because I'm also part of, of, of the group, so I'm going to check that if it's me that start typing, then I can ignore it. And um, over here, when we send a new message, I'm calling this method, the send, and this will tell all the clients to, uh, um, to update themselves, basically. So they will go over here and they will get the messages and refresh the client with the new message that arrived. So I don't need to do polling over there to get the, uh, uh, the new messages. I'm automatically being uh, broadcasted that the new message is in this group. So this is very simple, how we implemented the uh, SignalR feature. So, yeah, quick question. So, for yeah. uh, SignalR, sure. is there any special configuration that we need to do on Azure to enable SignalR? Um, no, no, you don't need to. So, no, nothing to open up uh, sockets or nope. anything like that. Okay. You just need to install the uh, Nougat package and you just define the hub and it uh, automatically works, as you can see here. It needs no further um, configurations. And when you release this code, is the yeah? So the service, the server side code for the chat is there too, right? So we can take a look at that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's part of the solution. Yes. Right. So everybody's free to go take a look at that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and the steps that uh, I'm showing you are uh, just uh, Git commits. So you will be able to also jump to any step and look on the code and the snapshot of, of how it was in a more simple way, right? So, um, so it can be, uh, as I said, easy to, to for learning purpose, right? Okay, so for our last uh, feature for tonight, or for this morning, depend on your time zone, um, we're going to talk about uh, push notification for a moment. So uh, this is another nice feature of the Azure mobile app because it enables us to have a push notification subtraction over the various providers. Otherwise, we would have to work our way in all of those providers and they're a bit different. And over here, we do need to have some uh, platform-specific code as well, because every platform uh, 
need to register to its own platform provider, a push notification provider. But at least the, the Azure portal, uh, the Azure mobile app gives us um, a way to define those uh, push notifications. And um, let's see where I can find those. So it's very similar what we did here. Uh, we will uh, need to register to the push notifications as well. Uh, this is this UI is a bit different. So let's jump over here. Okay, so this is the notification hub of Azure. And uh, what we need here to do is uh, configure. Let's see where it is. It's hiding for me now. Over here. So I've registered several of those. Um, again, this is very similar to how we uh, configured the authentication. Uh, you just need to go over here and um, create the process that will allow you to integrate with the uh, uh, Apple notification services and the Windows notification service. It's all uh, pretty well documented. And um, I've done it for, to, to enable, I think, uh, uh, Google and, and Windows. So, um, and the next step after you're doing the configuration on the uh, on the portal like uh, in that page is going to the platform specific code first on the client side and each is, is different so if we look at the uwp over here by the end we have this code that initializes the push notification listener for us and every time we will receive a push notification uh, we will get uh, let's put breakpoint here, for example. And uh, if we look at, at the Android one, it's a bit different. Uh, we have this GSM service, and um, it's a bit of a boilerplate code that you can easily find over in the internet. And uh, when you uh, define it, um, and uh, over here, the GCM client, you are able to get notification through to your Android application. So this is one step we need to do on the client side. And the last piece is uh, calling the authentication abstraction in the backend. Whenever there is a new message, for example, in the uh, message controller, we receive the new message. We can access the notification hub name. This is the same one over here that I'm using. The, uh, uh, for this application and we define the message that we want to send in an abstracted way and we just tell the hub to send this notification for us so let's run this uh, application last last time for the last time And hopefully the last demo will work as well. Uh, so let's go to another room and post a new message. And then we received the notification and uh, we can even allow it to propagate. Uh, because I removed all the notifications, then you didn't see it uh, getting being toasted, but it's over here. Um, so this was really quick of how to uh, wire up the notifications. Um, it's really simple. You just need to configure in the Azure portal over here. You need to get the client code running of, uh, uh, over here. And uh, in the server side, you call the notification hub and run this code to post this message. So um, we 
reach the end of our presentation. And to summarize what we have here is a working application. We know the users. We know we have a chat room in real time that we can uh, uh, send messages back and forth. We have push notifications. I think that in 60 minutes, we have gone a, a long way. And uh, from here, you are able to implement all the nice features that you want for your application. Uh, maybe even develop a, a Game of Thrones application for uh, organizing meetings. I would be happy to use that because I never reached it to implement it in the end. I know it's a <laughs> sad note to end with, but this is, this is the way that all side projects end in the way in, in the end, I guess. So um, I think that uh, the sorry, yes. I just say that's that's great. Um... And you hit you hit exactly sixty minutes, so which is yes. fantastic. Um, we have a couple more questions, but uh, I just want to point out, you know, Signal R is awesome, uh, not just for chat messages and chats. That's kind of the, you know, the the normal example that a lot of people use, and because it makes a really great example and a great demo. Uh, but as you start thinking about Signal R, there's lots of different places in regular applications that you could use it uh, also, and everything that you were talking about here is still going to apply to that. Which is great. Of course. Yes, yes. Uh, so if anybody has questions, go ahead and just add them now. I'll. We have, it looks like, four of them here. I'll quickly go through that I was kind of holding off until the end. Um, first of all, do you know, is there a chat room UI component or anything that just out of the box we mm -hmm. can drop into a, an application if we don't want to write all that ourselves for the UI side? Uh, sadly, I don't think there is one. Uh, UI, I'm most positive there isn't, but this is actually makes sense because uh, in most cases you will need to have a more customization and maybe different behaviors from a regular implementation. But something similar to what we've done here as a, in, in infrastructure, I think this is something that is really neat. If someone will do it, maybe, maybe us sometime in the future <laughs> as a chat services as a, as a service. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think great. there is uh, from the box. Yeah, you know, good place for um, for a component company to step up and do that. Yeah, <laughs> I right. agree. Um, do you happen to know everything we're talking about here and all the code? And again, people are going to be able to take a look at this code afterwards, and I'll put that up on the Xamarin University site. Um, but do you know would this work using .NET Core? So uh, I guess on the back end, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So .NET Core not supported on Xamarin, of course, but yeah, for the back end, for the server side. Yes. So um, I think that uh, uh, currently the Azure mobile app is using the full framework of ASP.NET. You also have the option to use Node and JavaScript, but this is a different uh, option. Um, as far as I can tell, uh, as of today, there is no way of using .NET Core and Azure mobile app. Of course, you can just get your own service up on Azure using .NET Core and, and use, but you don't, you will not have the features that we've seen here, such as authentication and push notifications. You will need to do it on your own, but you will be using .NET Core. So, <laughs> so yeah. I think maybe in the future, it will have an, another option in the Azure mobile app for .NET Core. Uh, it's, a, it's a good question. I actually, uh, we'll write it down for to check it out with the team and see if they have any plans or any anything in the future coming up. Maybe even in build. I don't know. Yep. Um, so yeah, it's, it's depending on the other teams to get that to work, right? So uh, the, yes. the Azure team and yes, any framework, all that kind of stuff. It depends on them getting that to work. Exactly. Um, so an interesting question here is: Did you think about a way of? I, this is 60 minutes, so probably not in this, but did you think about a way of creating a way to test this uh, without Azure? So maybe you're running it in test cloud and you don't want to keep hitting Azure to do this kind of testing. You just want to test the UI. Uh, how would you go about that? Yeah, so uh, let's, it's a good, very good question. So uh, uh, the way I would approach it is if we are doing unit testing, th this code is highly testable because we have all those inter interfaces that are easy, easily mockable. And um, if, for example, I'm, I'm testing the, uh, 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 the chat page, um, I can inject to it 
um, I, my own mock message manager. And I will just check that, uh, for example, if I have a send message, then those uh, were uh, sent into the mock object. And also the, the hub proxy is, is mockable since it's an interface as well. Um, obviously, there might be a, a small refactoring over here need to be done, uh, but um, with a very little uh, work to do, we can uh, have this whole thing testable. Um, perhaps the login page is a bit more difficult since it uses uh, this uh, uh, login page, but it's also an interface that uh, we are able to mock and and, and, and do some uh, a mock object that will just return static information for us to use. So um, this is the way I would approach testing in this uh, application. Yeah, so I think, especially if you're doing something like Test Cloud where you're testing the UI, um, you have a couple choices. One is exactly what you said, you would mock out all the remote calls. And to do that, uh, Xamarin UI test has kind of a backdoor feature where when it's running on Test Cloud, you can send it a message and say, okay, switch something in the code without uh, having to put a button on your UI to do that. So you would probably send mm -hmm. one of those backdoor requests and flip all your calls from real implementations to mocked implementations while it's running on test cloud. So that'd be one way to do it exactly like you were talking about. Uh, I think yeah. the other way would be uh, realizing that when you're running a UI test, which is what test cloud does, is you actually are running the entire application as it is. So the other way, and this would be a lot more work, but you would have um, some other service somewhere listening for these chats coming from test cloud, coming from the devices and just respond with some canned answers, leaving your chat app that's on test cloud running exactly as it is without mocking anything. Um, mm -hmm. But that'd be a lot more work. And UI tests yes. are usually a lot more work when you get into things like that. Yes, so I agree. Definitely something you'd have a lot of unit tests for and then a few UI tests to cover uh, the UI. Exactly. <laughs> um, I agree with you. Yeah. So another question, this is a great question, I think, is what do you think could go wrong uh, while you're using these types of things in an enterprise application? Like, what do you need to watch out for when you're integrating SignalR and using all these different technologies? So um, because everything is uh, automatically wired for you, I guess there is a security consideration that you would like to, to check, make sure that uh, you're using HTTPS over the wire and uh, you're not leaking any information to unwanted uh, listeners. Uh, this is one thing I can think about. When you're using Azure Mobile App, then after you do the login, every request is um, authenticated by the, the client ID that you got. So uh, there is not a lot of potential of problems there. Um, of course, like everything, um, when you start to use the push notification services, you need to consider uh, the loads and the latency and uh, other real life considerations of your app. Um, of course, the UI that we have here is very simplistic. Um, you would want to add uh, uh, notifications to the user that things are going over in the background and data is being transferred and handling errors and uh, offline and online support, which is actually a feature that is uh, also, uh, uh, we have support from Azure Mobile App that I didn't touch. Um, but if you're, you go without connectivity, you need to handle it gracefully. Um, yeah, so those are considerations that you need to think about more when you take this to the next step. Fantastic. Uh, one more question about uh, SignalR. Can you explain a little bit more about how SignalR works with with sockets and how uh, it kind of does the fallback mechanisms for the different technologies? Yeah. So, um, first of all, I'm not an expert in uh, SignalR. Uh, uh, probably uh, there are better people that uh, you can uh, try to talk with. But um, from the way, uh, what I know is that they check the technology's boundaries that they're working on. So if they, uh, for example, if you are in a, in a web application 
they check the, the, the browser itself and what are the potential uh, features that they, they can use. Uh, this is similar when they use the, the, the mobile platforms as well. If they are running on iOS and they're running on Android, what are the features of the platform that they have? And they decide which of the mechanisms are best to use. Um, so, and and if they don't have the, or in, in the end, the fallback is to use the polling for you. So you don't need to, to, to handle the timeouts and handle all the gritty details of, of making a polling work. So for the layer that we are using, the abstraction layer, the details is really hidden for us. We don't really know uh, the mechanism that was chosen and th the hoops they did in it to jump in order to get it for you. Yeah, so it's really powerful uh, how, it, how it handles yeah. it for you. Yeah. Uh, let's see, one more question, and this one's for me. Um, Two-part question. Good. Are there any free Azure credits for Xamarin University students? There aren't. Uh, Azure has a pretty good <laughs> trial program, so we True. just kind of rely on that um, for any trials and things like that. Um, are there any upcoming programs for Xamarin University students that I could share today? Uh, we're always working on new curriculum. Right now, we're focusing on rewriting a lot of existing classes and updating them and uh, making them better and incorporating new you know, new things coming from Apple and Google and making sure we are covering those as well so you're always up to date. Uh, that's what we're focusing on right now. And then we have lots of ideas for new classes also. So we will uh, always work on that. I don't have any dates on that. It depends on you know how, how quickly we can get the curriculum to a point where we're happy with it. Um, and then you know this week, starting tomorrow, a few of us are going to be out at Build. So if anybody's going to Microsoft Build, come visit the Xamarin University booth there. I'll be there along with a couple of uh, other guys, our curriculum manager and our director. So come say hi. And uh, that's what we're working on here for Xamarin University. Uh, also, um, add new things. Yeah, also, if you're in Build, check out this Ozcode booth. We also will be there. Um, it's a great uh, debugging extension for Visual Studio. Yes, it is. I noticed you're uh, you know, using it. I use it as well. It is uh, fantastic. Are you going to be there too? Unfortunately, I'm going to skip this uh, year because yeah. I'm going to NDC. Oh, but, oh, um, oh cool. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm not allowed to have so many trips. I'm going to Ordev <laughs> as well. I'm speaking there as well. So uh, busy schedule, not not for build this year. Sorry. Yes. Um, yeah, go check out Oscode. Oscode is great. Uh, another question is: Is the project available for download? Yes. Uh, I will take this recording of the of the session here today, and I will uh, run that through our rendering, and I'll get it uh, posted up on our site including in there is going to be a link to uh, hopefully the slides and the the code also so you will have access to that it's going to take a little while like i said i'm going to build uh, in just a few hours so hopefully i can get this done today uh, but keep looking back for that it'll be there in the next few days or so yeah so thank you so much for for being here <laughs> yes thank you everyone uh so i think that's uh, all the questions. I really appreciate that. Keep an eye out. We have some more guest lectures coming up in May and in June. Uh, and I'm always looking for new guest lectures. So if you have a presentation, you have some code you'd like to share with people, send me an email, just rob.gibbons at uh, xamarin.com or microsoft.com now. Uh, both of them will get to me. But uh, if you go to the Xamarin University site, you can find my contact information there too. But always looking for new talks. So thank you, everyone. I hope everybody has a great day, a great night. And we will see you next time.